So this is the Monday, April 24th meeting of the Conway Select Board. And when the Finance Committee appears at 6.15 or 6.30ish, it will be a joint meeting of the Select Board and Finance Committee. Um, <clears throat> the first item on the agenda is the minutes. We're tabling those to next meeting of the first. The second is a warrant. Is the warrants, but due to computer difficulties um, in the office, the only warrant that is available to sign is the accounts payable warrant in the amount of $233,280.99. And I did review that. Most of them, most of that is the quarterly insurance payments and health insurance payments, and that's why it's big numbers. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to approve that the accounts payable warrant in that amount. I looked it over at home. I uh, will second your motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 The uh, meetings attended by select board members. Oh, uh, yesterday's. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday the uh, select board had a, well, it was scheduled for four hour meeting, it ended up being closer to three, which is nice, but uh, um, to try to, just to try to do, deal with the capital committee and the finance committee, actually it was just the finance committee, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, about the capital request and about a couple other specific warrant articles that were I don't know about troublesome, but just required more attention than others. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of other meetings too. Okay. Public comment day. <laughs> uh, uh, unfinished business, new business. So, um, first item on the new business is to discuss the letter to the Pleasants. Um, so. Did everybody get to read that? Yes. It's yeah. And I know, I, but I wasn't clear. Have they been? Have these letters been sent yet to the no, peasants? Do no, they know about no. the issues that we're addressing in this letter? So I, I just based on my own prior conversation with with um, with Ken Pleasant, that these issues are known about. Um, okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the exact current state of their knowledge about every issue that is raised. Um, but I imagine that they are we very well informed with all of these issues. Um, you know, and I, I do know that, uh, uh, you know, I do know that Ken Pleasant and uh, his, his, his father, you know, Tom Pleasant are very well known in town and very, very well thought of by a lot of people, including me. So something like this, you know, the, um, the, you know, the, the, this was this was done with the extensive assistance of counsel. So this is not something that you know. I tried to make that clear. I, I kind of added a first paragraph to that just to make it really clear that this is not a select board initiative to do something like this. This is just the select board having to handle a situation, and this is uh, what town council recommends. So. Uh, you know, and the long and the short of it is that our insurance, yeah, we, we have our own insurance carrier, we have our own requirements to maintain our insurance, and um, we have to safeguard those. We have to safeguard the town's ability to be insured. <laughs> and so, so that's, that's really the, the, the genesis of this. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what else to say about it, but it's, 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 it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that it's come to this. I wish it had. And you're saying that because other communications have been made with them and that have gone uh, far? Yeah, I don't want to characterize like whether it's gone. There's been some dialogue. Okay. Um, but the, the things that are listed in the letter to them 
and the people at home watching this are really super interested in this, the letter can be reviewed uh, at town hall. It's public record, but um, but the um, but, but basically, the, there there's individual things that individual concerns that the town has to have um, that require action. In, in our attorney's opinion, so um, and that's 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 where we're at. You know, and, and <clears throat> there, there are there are other aspects to it. You know, I know that I, I, I you know just from my own conversations with with the the you know with, with Ken Pleasant, there there is a belief that um, that a survey that is the basis for all of the, 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 the survey that's on file in the registry of deeds is actually incorrect. But, um, but we can't rely on anecdotally uh, anything like that. Like if, if it's in the registry of deeds, then that's the survey that we have to rely on. And if a landowner doesn't like that, then they can, re there's a whole process, a legal process where they can go through and try to get property lines adjusted based on incorrect surveys. But that's not that's not our thing. That's the landowner's thing, and it hasn't been done. So. Um. So that would be um, that would be their their best recourse if they disagree with all of these findings, and the letter would be to have property resurveyed. I mean, they would basically challenge the existing um, property maps. Um, yeah, that that and. Uh, you know, but potentially uh, those, potentially those concerns to, uh, address some of the issues, but not all of them. And that the other thing that that the town needs to protect itself from is uh, Massachusetts re recognizes something called the doctrine of adverse possession, and that means that if you um, have a claim to somebody else's property that is open and notorious. Notorious meaning that it's, it's well established that you are acting as if that's your property. Then, um, and, and nothing is done about it by the actual landowner. Then after a period of years, and it's not that many years, the person can actually claim legal title to that land. And, um, so we also have to, so it's been a few years that these things have existed. We know about it. The possession is open and notorious within the meaning of Massachusetts's adverse possession law. And um, we have to take action because of that as well. That's just a whole, that's a whole other thing. Couple questions. Uh, number seven states that they're driving over a grassy area um, north of the school driveway. Is that to access something like their garage yeah that's a very relatively thin strip of grass in question but it is right um, so the driveway this is talking about the the one that had been actually the road that leads up to led up to the highway facility uh -huh. um, which the town still has uh, right of ways for utilities on but there is a little strip of land right um, on the Conway Grammar School driveway mm -hmm. that goes back a little bit um, and basically basically prevents their legal access across that that part portion. So that's and but they th th that doesn't impede with their driveway that goes to the the driveway that goes up the Roaring Brook Road. No, not at all. Okay. That's their actual driveway. Okay. Just yeah. making sure. Yep. And then if, like Erica says, they want to take recourse by trying to um, resurvey the land, what does that do to the 30-day window on, that's written on this letter? That's, those are very specific legal questions. That, okay. Um, <laughs> Good counsel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is exactly why we yeah. have an attorney. Um, so the, but, you know, what I, the, uh, what, I, what I would like to just say, though, is that um, I know just personally, I love the, the Pleasant family. I'm really glad that they're in Conway. I'm sorry that, 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 this, that we're doing this. Not, and, um, but we are just responding to the advice of the town attorney. And so that's really, hopefully, hopefully we can get together and talk and that this can all be worked out. 
but sorry that we're sending you this letter. You're not going to like it. Um, <laughs> Uh, assuming that this might be Is this going to be fixed in the prize when they get this letter? Well, or I mean, be, something, like this, something like this is, I mean, now that we're talking about it, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a surprise to them very long. But, um, yeah. Letters have been sent by former town administrators about different issues um, that never were resolved, some of which are included in here. So I don't think that it really will be a huge surprise. So with that, we do need to take a vote to sign the letter. Um, yeah, yeah I move that we sign the letter to the Pleasants. Yeah, I will second Erica's motion. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Aye. Erica, you you not being here. Um, we, can, we can do it next week if you want. It's up to you. I, and I, I'll be back in town um, tomorrow night, so I can. I'll stop by Wednesday morning. All right. Oh, okay. That's even better. That's perfect. Thanks. Thanks. Um, uh, next item is the uh, discussion of um, discussion of the letter of support for the MVP action grant application, which is something near and dear to Veronique's heart. <laughs> Why don't you tell us why this is so important? Well, it's part of the application process to have letters of support um, kind of backing up and letting the state know that this isn't something that the town's doing arbitrarily, that there is support for it. So it seems rather obvious that if the select board's in support of it, there ought to be a select board letter stating so. Um, I also have a sort of citizen support letter um, for signature both at Baker's and at the Inn for people and businesses that are going to be affected by trying to mitigate flood activities in the center of town. And the town of Ashfield is going to be sending us a letter of support because part of this grant application is going to include a comprehensive education plan and we're going to start from the Ashfield Dam down. So it kind of made sense to you know, anything that we do education-wise, we will be inviting Asheville residents to come and join us because the South River is all, you know, one piece. You can't just kind of cut it off and mm -hmm. say it starts here, so. I will note, though, that in the reciprocal equities between us and Asheville, that we co-signed for years in a row their constant annual request to fix their dam in, through the MVP program, and eventually, thanks in no small part to our being part of it and it being able to qualify as a regional project, um, they, they got that $1.5 million grant. So uh, I don't know what the do total dollar amount of this grant is. 450000 is what All right. we're going so, so we're still like a million short. <laughs> so from, I'll do my best. All right, all right. <laughs> So, Erica, this is just the sort of what we, a, a, a big chunk of what we tried to do last year and didn't get approved. Um, and the year before. And the, the year before, which we did get approved but couldn't do because we couldn't fulfill the terms of the agreement due to the unwillingness of an individual landowner to sell. That was a whole, yeah. So, that's what this is about, and specifically the hydromorphological stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, so. Well, I'll make a motion to vote to sign a letter supporting the MVP action grant application. So I'll, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's, Aye. Another, that's another one for you to sign in a couple of days. Okay. Later. The next is, is, so is it voting to obligate the remaining ARPA funds to the Public Safety Building Office project? Um, so the balance is... Well, I don't, oh. I have it on the sheet there. I put remaining because just in case we got into a situation where, you know, there's a couple cents off or something like that. I figure if you guys at least make it known that you 
um, approve of using the remainder of the funds for that project, then we can get an exact amount. Right now, it's three hundred and ninety thousand six hundred and thirty-five and fifty-nine cents. Okay. And how much NARPA is left? That's it. That is it. Okay. Three hundred ninety thousand six hundred thirty-five and fifty-nine cents. Got it. And hopefully, that's not subject to change. But yeah. Well, oh, actually, you know what? Some of no, how much of it should be good, but I just didn't want to. So, I mean, this is a statement of intention. This is not a blank check, though. This is so every individual expenditure would still come before us to discuss. And well, no, because if you're saying that's that's not how I would interpret it. If you're saying that you want to vote the remainder of the funds, then that's what you're saying. Yeah, we it's we're we're gonna we're saying that that was a statement of intention that that's what we're doing, um, but that's not. Nobody gets a blank tag. I'm very confused. Um, so you're saying that you somebody could still come and ask for ARPA funds even though you've no, said, oh, no, okay. No, that is, no, no <laughs> nobody, nobody gets to ask for ARPA funds anymore. Okay, that's but, okay. But that's nobody gets a blank check in a, with a dollar amount attached to it and no signet, no, nothing, nobody to so make it out to. You're agreeing to take all the ARPA funds for the funding for the um, facility, but each, Oh, it'll still have to, to be, it'll absolutely still have okay. to come. Okay, I didn't understand so, what you were saying. Yes. Of course. So the initial answer to my question of course. was? Yes. Of course. Yes. yes. Wonderful. Yeah, because that will all actually also go through finance when we talk, when we have the public buildings right. and we sit down, we have a real number and we talk about how it's going to be financed. So. All right. All right. Um, no, so no, no, no more. All right, so we'll move on to some of the mail items. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll vote here. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll you. make a motion to vote to obligate the remaining ARPA funds to the Public Safety Building Office Edition. I'll get a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, the mail. So the first thing. Uh, just to note, while we're talking about Asheville, they did send us a very nice thank you note for opening our emergency shelter to them during the March Nor'easter. Um, the emergency shelter was largely opened at their request, so <laughs> they never came. But, um, but still, it's a nice thank you letter. Classy, actually. Bronnie was sign signaled out for the compliments. Um, The, there's a series of, there's several herbicide letters, our favorite kinds of letters from Eversource and from Pan Am Railways. And um, they're spraying this year throughout their rights of way in Conway. And same as last year, same as the year before, same as the year before that, but we, we really can't regulate their conduct. Um, yeah, but, if, pe if residents do have any concerns, we encourage people to videotape them while they're spraying. And um, there, there are state agencies that can still regulate their conduct. And, uh, you know, and it's a, some of the things that they can't do, they cannot spray threatened or endangered fauna um, or flora. And they cannot spray where they're not supposed to spray. They're only authorized to spray within the confines of their rights of way, which are narrowly defined. <clears throat> and the same thing, Pan Am Railways there, that railroad track does go through Conway, a couple, a few miles of it. And uh, that's, that's where they'll be spraying, on both sides. And, um, and then there's a letter from the Franklin Land Trust about their their B2, D2, R2 on Saturday, August 19th. And they have had some bad luck in Conway. A couple years ago, they had a bad bike wreck. And it wasn't caused by automobiles. It was caused by other bicycles. Um, and that was right, right on River Street, right where River Street meets Main Street. The one bicyclist was ahead of the pack, turned the corner, stumbled and came off of his bicycle, and then the whole pack following all ran him over. He had multiple fractures and needed lead helicopter out of here. Um, but, so that's, 
you know, it's one of those things. Um, but it's a big day. We wish that more of them, or some of any of them, would stop in at some of our businesses and patronize them. But uh, you know, maybe, maybe some other time. This is a real right here. Stakes are high. <laughs> and the last I, is um, to, this is for the for town and um, for employees of the town and potentially for residents as well the horticulture program at Franklin Tech offers trees to member towns um, from ranging from shade to flowering types and they're offered for $90 a piece and a two inch caliber tree uh, tree $90 price is a good price. So if you're interested in that, um, contact Veronique at the town office and she'll give you the necessary information to then contact Franklin Tech. And that's, that was mail call. <laughs> that's a couple weeks worth. Um, so with that, Finance committee now has a quorum, and if they want to call their meeting to order, we can start to banging away this morning again. I make a motion to call the uh, finance committee meeting to order to the select board. Second. All in favor? Yeah. It's unanimous. Good. So anybody have any preference about where you want to start? Uh, this article is two. It, means Eric is, is this Eric any other members of the select board joining us? Hold on. Eric is here. Or I'm here. Oh, he's up there. I see. So Looking yeah. two-dimensional. So yes, the warrant and the recap in front of you, uh, we did since yesterday. Yeah. Um, just to, so yes, the um, on the warrant is the two uh, percent. And as you can see, it's a 4.21 percent increase. I did correct the police wages. Um, and just so you're also aware, on the warrants, Jan Warner let me know that she did not need the $10,000 for the tax title oh. this year. So that got taken off. So that's $10,000 more for free cash. Mm -hmm. um, and I reordered the rest of the warrant articles. I think that was the only other change. So, on the, on the back of the ledger size, it shows you the free cash running balance. Now. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, I think the only one, the finance committee still, on the ledger one, on the, the big one, the really big paper. Oh, I see. You put it yeah, yeah, it's on the back. I like that. Safe street. So the one that you all hadn't voted on yet. Yeah. 22. 22, which is 20. now Article 20. 20. Thank you. Yeah. I did speak with town council about this and with Mike, our accountant, Mike Cella, and Mike said he's seen this on every town warrant for about, since 1980s. <laughs> And it was something that town council said that in the Municipal Modernization Act, for some reason, they didn't change this one. Mm -hmm. What it actually means is that the treasurer and collector can enter into agreements with banks. Yeah. That's yeah. literally That's all it is. Yeah. And they do statutorily, they're allowed to do it when you give them the rights for three years. But rather than try to keep track of when it's been three years, you, you just, just throw it on the warrant every yeah. year, and then you don't have to worry about okay. it. Yep. All right. Okay. So that's all it is. <coughs> yep. so no right. surprises there. Oh. All and right. I think that's the only one that, other than Article 2, that you all haven't voted on, correct? Do you want to take a vote on this? Yes, take it order. Right. Right. Let's start with the more controversial one, Article 20. <laughs> All right, I make a motion that we uh, vote to approve Article 20 as presented in this, this version of the Warren Articles. <laughs> so moved. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, so to the next part, uh, and I'll just sort of summarize where we've been and where we're at right now for Erica's convenience um, and so the, the the discussion about the co the cost of living uh, increase for town employees which 
is what we're about to head into, which, which also includes uh, school employees. And that, that is the dilemma that we face because we are headed into a contract renegotiating year. Um, and uh, so, it, it, you know, not, not only do we have our own fiscal difficulties, but this is what, you know, if, if, if we're trying to negotiate with our unions based on our actual and real fiscal difficulties, um, then to, you know, the, if, if, if the, the reason if the, right now the, the, the our, 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 our education unions that are, are finishing a three-year agreement where their third and final year is two percent cost of living adjustment um, every every one percent increase in that number just at Conway Grammar School is twenty one thousand um, dollars a little bit more than that, probably. Um, that doesn't, yeah. Um, that doesn't include central office either. But um, the the uh, so so it's very difficult to to approach a negotiation asking for a certain number when you yourself are exceeding that number in your compensation for the non-school employees. And that's so. So this number that, it, you know, it, it can be deceptive when you're, you're looking at it and you're like, oh, the difference between 2% or 3% really isn't very much because we have very few non-school, comparatively speaking, we have very few non-school employees that are subject to this. Um, so, you know, and so what I'm kind of trying to get my, everybody's head around is that there is this, 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 this year in particular has a greater, impact a downstream impact which has the very real potential to be substantially more than the actual impact of the budget as we look at it and see it right now so you know and, and we did run into this this was three years ago at the beginning of the cycle i believe that was our previous town administrators last year but at, at any rate that that was that was the first year of the pandemic that was the year that we had to do a no wage increase for for all the employees, um, which we then were able to retroactively fix that. But what made that particularly difficult because we were negotiating with our unions and at the same time unable to give a cola at all to our non-school employees, and at the same time contractually obligated to give an increase of I believe it was eight percent to the then town administrator, and so. That, that was a very particular combustible combination <laughs> of factors that made your humble negotiator's life miserable. Um, while I was in those negotiations, at least. Um, so, so you know that that's just there. There's sort of timing, to, to, and this is bad timing to go greater than two percent. Um, as well as the fact this is a very bad year for us, and and it cross the fingers, it looks like next year might be a little better. Um, but, um, so that's, that's where we're at, or at least that's my sort of uh, assessment of where we're at, Erica, and although, you know, I don't know. The, 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 the Finance Committee voted last time to recommend 2%. Um, Chris and I, the, the, the two people that, the, we, we had a differing opinion. Chris favored a, a different amount other than 2%. So we agreed to sort of table this vote until we have Erica's presence. It didn't technically favor, I just thought that your vote would be necessary in a three vote system. Okay. And my whole, not argument, but what I was trying to say is, you know, it says on here COLA, but it's not actually COLA. What it really is is a salary adjustment and that the actual COLA for this past year is just under 8%. Uh, goods and services is higher, closer to 11%. So I understand everything Phil says. I, I, I'm i leaning towards the same solution to, to say 2% It's better than nothing. It's just at the same time, the discussion that needs to be had, it needs to be brought up that um, 
I don't like having to say 2% just because it'll destroy our budget, um, given what's happening with actual COLA rates in our country. Well, that is very true. Yeah. Well, that is very true. And you know, the, the, there's, there's so many of these sort of dilemmas with each one of these articles, really. They, they, and that's, you know, we're, we're not the cause of these problems. We're just tasked with trying to solve them. Um, and that's, you know. The, Our part of the job. Yeah, and, and it's, it's really depressing. <laughs> and I knew, you know, when, when we looked at the governor's cherry sheets, when that budget came out, I knew that this was the future. We knew that town meeting is, that, you know, that, that it's, we were not treated well by this governor in this first go around. Um, so that's, that's why our, our revenue went up 1.9%. Yeah, and we're, we're dealing with. So, Chris, you, you are in favor of a 2% COLA? I'm leaning or, towards I a mean, 2% given the revenue is 1.9. I am leaning towards the 2%. It's just that I feel awful about saying that, but I, I think we do have to be um, prudent in our, our decision here, and uh, I am leaning towards 2%. And Phil, you were leaning towards? 2%. I wasn't leaning, I was like there all the yeah. way. Okay. Sorry. Right. <laughs> um, and you know that's that's and it, and it is tough. And I, you know when when we present this, I try to apologize to the many family members of town employees that are there. And um, you know, and I, you know, I remember having to do that, having to have that conversation at town meeting when we were asking them to take zero, and that was brutal. There was tears in family members' eyes when we were going through the budget. It was awful. Um, yeah. So you know that's and, and you know it, it's it's tough. The, the, the town employees effectively lose money year to year in, in this case the, the, when their own expenses have gone up. Cola is based on real numbers and real you know the actual cola phrase that Chris is referring to. Mm -hmm. You know that that's based on actual data, like. Um, that's how much it costs the increase to live in this country costs average across the country is groceries and gas and things like that and um, we're not able to compensate we, we, do, we are unable to compensate the employees fairly to just make let them stay level um, and it's it's brutal so sorry everybody <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know, even if, yeah, none of the choices are appetizing. E you know, theoretically, even if we could have like squeezed out another quarter percent or a half percent, it's still it's still bad for them all. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question, more like process. If by chance some miracle occurs and the governor's office does some type of uh, thing where we get more chapter seventy and ninety money. In, and we learn about that between now and say December. Could at a special town meeting in December, could we, if our, our budget picture should change for fiscal year 24, do a, a, an increase? At town meeting, sure. Mm -hmm. sure. I mean, that's yeah. what I would say, suggest. I mean, you know, um, we did the zero percent one year, and the following year we did a lot more. So, you know. So you're suggesting everybody write a letter to our governor? <laughs> I suggest more than that. I suggest that we. Go to Mr. Gripko and chart a bunch of school buses one day and get down to state delegation and just say, you know, hey, there's life beyond 495. Yeah. It's not a place in a map. I mean, this really is painful huh? for so many towns in Western Mass. Yeah. yeah, and so many that are like us that don't have an industrial tax base, it's just 100% residents, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, sure. Eric, if you have a different opinion, let us know. But if not, I'm I'm ready to move forward with the vote. Okay, I think I am too. All right. So, motion to go with the two percent. What we are calling a cost of living adjustment, but that's not the actual federal and state legal definition. 
um, of that term. But that's what we're calling it. So it's in the form already. So it's a 2% increase to COLA is the motion. I'll second your motion. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So that is three to nothing. Great. So that means that what is in the bottom of Article 2 can remain unanimously approved. <laughs> Woohoo! No, but I mean, we, we, I mean, Eric, if you have any questions on Articles 6 through 13, we identify those as, as the more, uh, should you say, controversial. Yeah, you can say that. Challenge. And uh, so, I mean, while we're all here, we should, if you want to discuss, me yesterday, you know, Chris and, and uh, Phil discussed, but if you would like to as well. Well, do you guys want to just go down through each since, you know, do three, four? Uh, six to 12, 13, I don't think is. Quite so bad? No. All right. It's just six to 12. Okay. And, and actually, when I look at it, I, I thought six and seven are sort of getting tarred by their uh, proximity to six through 12. Um, but uh, um, just beca because that, that we're not asking for free cash, we're not asking for, we're, we're, we're I mean, this is an opportunity to explain how we're doing this addition without additional public funds. Um, whereas all the, the, the following articles are all of the um, either free cash or capital stabilization. So to, to understand this real quick, because the number you gave earlier for the remainder of our to put into the building was 390, but currently the um, the proposals for 311. No, this is no, a separate no. pool. It's an addition. It's a separate it's an addition. Oh, okay. the, the, whole, the whole thing is going to be um, just under 800,000 is what we're hoping to have earmarked. Okay, because I thought the 311 was from Arvo. No, the 311 is from the $450,000 that run on the Highway Facility Got Committee. It. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I apologize. Oh, I think it says I, right there. I'm sorry. I think I, <laughs> I think I forgot. Well, there's a lot of moving pieces yeah, in this, so I, um, I think I forgot to mention. Uh, I've taken out the Cricket Hill um, request because Jan let gave me today something that said that I think it was 2001 town meeting voted for the funds that came from the logging mm -hmm. on Cricket Hill that half was going to go to the general fund and the other half was going to be for conservation and recreation. So even though it was on a warrant two years ago, I talked to the accountant, I would prefer us to go um, through town meeting to ask them to rescind that first mm -hmm. before, because mm -hmm. it just would be proper, because they've already allocated it right. for those purposes. Right. So town meeting wanted to decide if they want to keep it where it is, or if the, and it just was, too complicated to get into here, so I said we can always do that in December. We're not in a rush. Okay. For twenty thousand okay. dollars. Sure. So that was removed, just okay. so you're aware. Does, is that Article Seven, Barney? It um, it's not. And not anymore. In anymore. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. In not in the latest one. So. I'm. Yeah. Um. So anyway, sorry. Did, are, were you were you going to go in order through all these? So I, just from my brain. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and the first three through five one. Yeah, three through five, because I think those are pretty quick for you, right? Yeah. I mean, three is just the housekeeping saying you're going to set the salaries. All right. Let's let's while we're doing this, we can just some of these just take a quick vote on, okay? Mm -hmm. er, Erica, Article three. Um, um, the, the motion is select board shall, shall recommend Article three. That's just a housekeeping giving us permission to yeah. set the salaries. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, three nothing. Yeah. Article four, um, allowing Frontier to establish the Capital Stabilization Fund. Those of you with um, that may remember from December when something like this was attempted and did not succeed, this language is far clearer and more straightforward than the very convoluted language that was presented mm -hmm. to us by the school attorney. Mm -hmm. um, 
um, um, before. So um, we were the guinea pigs for that one, and I was able to report how bad that language was and how many problems it caused us, and how I was unable to answer the questions because I didn't understand the language. Um, um, so <laughs> we, I have higher hopes for this one. Um, because it makes sense. You read it, it's like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, so it does require two thirds, though. So the motion here is to grant Frontier Regional the ability to establish a capital stabilization fund like every other school district in the state. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. So our, Article Five is the stage curtain. This does come out as this does come out of free cash. So I perceive this as potentially vulnerable. Um, mm -hmm. um, that this is this is the, the our our CPC our, our community preservation committee did did not approve this expenditure. That is why it is on this this warrant. Should we put a flame retardant before stage curtain? <laughs> You know, that is a good idea, because... How about make, make it uh, state fire marshal code approved? Yeah, that's even a better idea. Yeah. Because okay. that, that is the genesis of this. Yes. They came in and demanded that they we take that curtain down and mm -hmm. yep. all that. And, they have administrative um, powers. Yep. And, and, and it's expensive because it's a highly regulated thing. Oh, yeah. And it's got to meet state mm -hmm. fire marshal and department of education things. And mm -hmm. there's only a couple of licensed vendors for it and yeah it has a it has a definite time limit it yes. like expires after 15 years or something yeah. i forget what it was but. Mm. but we're supposed to have one we should have one the state should have a curtain all right so i change it to say provide ten thousand dollars to pay for a state fire marshal approved stage curtain that's it yeah. we're not right there. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. if there's ever an insurance claim on it heard of the state fire marshal yeah. approved it i mean Good idea. So I'll make a motion to approve that article. All in favor? Aye. Oh, second. Aye. Uh, oh, yeah, second. I'll second it. So that's unanimous. So, Article 6 is. Uh, the $311,000, this is transferring from the Highway Maintenance Building Special article to the Public Safety Building Additional Fund. Um, so it's existing money that we're transferring to put to the Public Safety Building. It, this does not cost the taxpayers an additional penny. So uh, for that reason, I think it'll be favorably received. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to make a motion to approve Article 6 as it currently stands. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Article 7, another public safety thing. This is from the sale of real estate special revenue fund um, to the public safety building addition fund. And this was the money from the sale of the old Conway Grammar School, which uh, has been sitting in the bank accounts of this town wow. since 1980? Wow. Hmm. Um, and what type of account? Uh, <laughs> just, just a high-yield account. No. A high-yield checking account. That's a really good That was my question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We probably don't have that number here. I'm sure we could find it. Well, I'm sure it. you can find well, it. Well, no, I'm not sure we could find it. Okay. But <laughs> I mean, it, it could have been sold for you know five or ten thousand dollars. Right, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, kind of, at least in like a money market account, <laughs> yeah. or something, you know. It was actually ten dollars <laughs> we put into <laughs> uh, <laughs> Apple stock when it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so I'll make a motion to approve the Article Seven eighty four thousand six hundred ninety five dollars and seven cents from the sale of real estate special revenue fund. Second. Second. All in this. favor? Aye. 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 Um, I 
And how many and years is this for Article 8? So Article 8 is, um, it's, it is the, the estimated cost it was um, over 600, between 600 and 800,000. We started saving last year. It needs to get purchased in 2028. So this is only the second year. Mm -hmm. So this is only the second year. However, this is $100,000 out of free cash. And this is where it is legitimate to have the debate at town meeting floor about what do you do in lean times? Do you keep doing what you were doing and just pay it? Or do you, or, or, you, know, or do you reduce services or do you reduce payments of this nature, um, which is in essence a gamble that you'll be able to make that up next year because we have we need a new fire truck in 2028. You can't use these things past their recommended expiration. When they show up at your burning house, the thing has to work. <coughs> so, um, uh, but but it is it is uh, it, it is the single of all of the single items on the on on this warrant that could be used to lower the tax assessment this year coming up this is the big biggest item this hundred thousand well <coughs> what do you what do you right and the difference with that really ain't a hundred thousand dollars is not going to lower i mean well it reduces our tax nice. assessment it's not good because this is free cash so it's not going to reduce like it's not going to reduce the percentage the 4.21 that's not going to change it will reduce the amount of money that we have on hand and free. I mean, it'll mm -hmm. it would increase yeah. the amount of money we have on hand and free cash. Yeah. Right. It wouldn't reduce the asking price of the fire truck. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. When? What I just said before. Forget. Well, not really. But I mean, but I mean, you know, it, it's, taxpayer yeah, it's, it's taxpayer money. Yeah, it's taxpayer money, and yeah. and you're right. But it's also deferring cost we know we're going to incur yeah. and if we're not saving for it then and we don't have a, a plan for growth so to say that we're going to make it up in future years without a plan for growth is kind of you know wishful thinking yeah, yeah. if we have more money in free cash right then then what then yeah. we're underfunded up towards our first year fire in an apple stock yeah it's uh, like six one half dozen but we more. missed that boat too <laughs> Well, I mean, in theory, if, if interest rates for saving are, are high right now, <clears throat> and in a few years, interest rates for borrowing might come back to where they were just a couple of years ago. And so, I mean, there is... Might. might. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Even if that's the case, I mean, the way we're looking at it right now, we're, we're probably going to be $200,000 short in 2028 when, when it comes to it. And so we may have to, to go out and borrow at whatever that rate is just to fund that capital purchase. So, so I yeah. just we know there are no grants, despite what Congressman and Governor had, had given us hope and encouragement. Uh, <laughs> the USDA World Development said I, uh, when he left, I was so excited. I was like, oh, he's really going to help us. <laughs> and this money goes into stabilization, which is earning interest. That's right. Yeah. Jan and Jan does a wonderful job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. shops around. So it's not like it's not like it's not invested. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Do you have any questions about the fire truck, Erica? Ready to vote? What I mean, are you? What are, are we taking a vote right now? Well, that's what I'm asking. You ready? Are you ready to to take a vote on whether we put a hundred thousand dollars into the fire truck stabilization fund this year? That's right. I, it, everything just froze. Can you say that again? Uh, we're basically asking if you want to take the hundred thousand and reserve it for the fire truck stabilization fund. It's Article Eight. Okay, so we are voting. Yep, uh, I'll make a yes. motion to approve Article Eight um, to um, appropriate hundred thousand dollars to the fire truck stabilization fund. A second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Canadian hotel internet. <laughs> oh. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's 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 not good. <laughs> <laughs> Why <Wi> pay? <-fi>, eh? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now we're right, insulting so people across <laughs> national lines. Yeah. <laughs> that's their fair game. Yeah. I think they're fair game. So that's the advantage you have. No, 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 don't make that sound, Phil. No, the next, the next four articles are the ones that make me want to stay home that day. Um, no, I'm just, I think the important thing about these is how, how we propose the fund. Yeah. Um, so the next one is just, we'll just go for it, I guess, to see. see <laughs> Um, um, the the uh, article nine is the, the transfer of seventy thousand from the capital stabilization fund for the purchase of a slide side entry exit rubber tire compact loader, um, which is a two thirds vote. So this is this is for the highway department. This is a compact loader, which is what most most people call this a skid steer. A, a skid steer. But we're calling it we're we're calling it a compact loader. So it's a fancy um, front loader. Yeah, or um, the little bobcat. It's a fancy little bobcat. Probably that's a skid steer. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a big skid steer. Bigger, yeah, bigger stand. And instead of wheels, it's got like tank treads. Uh, yeah, no. the, the one that has, has, has wheels. Tank right. oh, the, oh, okay. This one, the new one has wheels, right. it's, and it's articulated. Right. Yes. And then, Erica, just to let you know, I, my vote's already on here, because I'm not going to change it from one committee to the next. <laughs> so 9 through 12, if you have any questions on them, just ask. Just ask. And the one thing that, that Erica, you might, not, you, you might not have caught when Ron was here talking about this, I don't, was that last week, or was it? I don't remember. But, um, our article 9 and 10, the, comp, the, the skid steer comp slash compact loader and the plow truck are the highway department's number one priorities of these four. Uh, the, the first two? Yeah, the first two. The boom lift okay. and, and the chipper are lesser priorities. Ironically, they come from free cash and some stabilization. In other words, we need two thirds of so, um, hmm. yeah, and, and so that's. Does it make sense to change that? They're actually coming from the highway maintenance fund. So, like, when you get to Article Six, and people are like, "Well, why three hundred eleven thousand out of the four fifty? It's because one hundred thirty one, one hundred thirty nine thousand is funding Article Eleven and Article Twelve from the highway, from the savings that they got. From right, them. right, and I'm just, I think that the, the But it's not free cash. Uh, no, he's talking about nine, 9 and 10. From what Ron said, these have to be part of the capital stabilization yeah. fund. They can oh, they have to be, oh, gotcha, oh, okay. Yeah, because they're, they're new capital expenditures. Okay. Well, they, they don't, yeah, they don't have to be, but it certainly makes sense to. Well, because we're making these other capital expenditures that aren't coming from the capital stabilization right. fund. So, I mean, right. I think we got four items here, and we got two different sources of but funding. But the capital stabilization fund is created was created specifically to fund these right. types of items. Yeah, no, I, again, that's one side of the argument. The other, Alan's, I think, saying, well, why are we putting it up to two thirds vote when we could put up to a simple majority? Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. You use free cash. It's kind of forcing one is our more opinion. controversial. We, we yeah, knew the first two. Yeah, I mean, that's it's like, just you know, it's yeah. it's looking at both sides of the arguments I see from, from yeah, a you, ca capital you, sourcing standpoint. You could do it that way, and then you could have an article. If you, that if says you're going to be, if we're not going to have, if we're not going to be able to get two thirds majority or vote on on these things. Um, the, right. These aren't usually very. Close. You actually. If you don't. If you're not going to get two. If you're not going to get two thirds, you're not going to get. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. You get blown out of the water. You won't have enough money yeah. because we yeah. we only have 150 146 thousand dollars left. Yeah. And we don't want to go In free below cash. that. Well, we can't. But that's and that's more than 150 thousand. No, the rationale for, for this two. is what it is. It's just. You know, gotcha. So that makes sense. Yeah, we don't have the free right. cash to spend right. on it. Right. Yeah. We don't want to do one of them. Right, right, and even that is leaving it a little. Yeah, I, I, I guess below cash. your threshold. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the other, the other thing was like we were saying, the capital stabilization fund was intended for these things. These yeah. are replacements of yep. Yes. Yep. current yep. materials or part or equipment. It's the, yeah, it's the, the proper, it's the proper way to do things. Right. I, I, I get that. Yeah. Okay. 
And I do appreciate the, uh, the, the in this one, that I do appreciate the new capital committee's work on this, and especially their investigation of used options. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and that we were able to compare, there the, was not a sufficient price to point difference between used and new in this case for the skid steer. Um, so when you're only saving ten, fifteen thousand dollars by getting new, you get new over a city when it's yeah. a seventy thousand dollar item. So, okay. uh, so with that, um, so we'll, uh, so the vote for I mean, the vote for Article Nine. I, you know, I, I'm I'm persuaded that this is an appropriate thing to get at this time. So we need to replace it. It's his number one choice. And, Buying it, when buying it used was sixty thousand, so you, it was seventy thousand. Yeah. Um, oh, that is the one thing, Erica, is that he should be able to get um, money back from the sale of the old one. So. It's but the skip here or the flat? Uh, yeah, for the here. compact loader. Okay. So make a motion to approve. Article nine, the, the seventy thousand for the skid steer slash compact loader. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 I know it's weird. I don't want to make the motion. Sorry. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He's he's given the yeah. so, so, so that's so that's, uh, so that's unanimous. <laughs> article nine. That's good democracy. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Article 10, $80,000 from capital stabilization for, for the purchase of plow truck. Um, a one-ton, four-door, short-fed, six-cylinder diesel with a new V plow. And a gooseneck hitch. And a gooseneck hitch. Yeah. Yeah. Are you writing a country western song? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a girl and a dog in there yeah, yeah, a dying girl and a girl, yeah, dying dog and a girl with his left. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so that's you. Yeah, this is this was something that Ron felt is very very necessary. This is one of the things I looked up for used, and there was nothing. That came from from the, there were some, but the, the, the they were almost as expensive as this for something. Yes. It was four to five years yeah. old. That still needed upgrades. That still needed upgrades, yeah. right. So yeah, this is a very specific request. Um, also, he needs it because of the, the it doesn't require a commercial driver's license to, dr to drive this vehicle. That's right. correct. Yeah. So he doesn't need CDL for this. Um, and another point, you know, just to bring up, so you know Eric is, uh, Ron also, it, he uh, gave his own personal truck to the highway department for use. So, um, just want to put that out there. As well. a, he, he donated his own truck. He donated his own truck, and the one that he has now will replace the donated one as Correct. the extra spare. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this one's in deep trouble <laughs> from get go, but we'll see. Um, Hopefully, we'll have a curb now. No, we won't have a curb now. Well, yeah, yeah. I have to bring a spare set of clothes. Well, you're not going to get to defend it. How about that? Then you can. You can. <laughs> no, I, you're, you're right. Um, <laughs> they shouldn't. It, it's. We'll, we'll see. But um, I don't. I, I will be reading it, I suppose. But I don't. And you can duck on the uh, table. I, 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 I actually, I actually am going to. Um, I actually am going to vote to be recommending this. I think. Um, I, I take Ron's recommendations about the two things that he that the department needs for the frontline department equipment. That that's meaningful to me, and um, so that's. So okay, so a motion to mo motion to uh, recommend Article Ten, the second plow truck. Travel truck with accoutrements. Um, all in favor? Second. Aye. 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 So that's unanimous on the flat truck. Farewell, younger flat truck. Um, 
Article 11 is $40,000 from highway maintenance building for the boom lift. Used boom lift. Used. Yeah. Just to make sure everybody remembers, Article 11 and 12, we use rental funds out of the highway budget to cover these. So that would eventually do away with the rental portion of Ron's budget if we had these two pieces of equipment. And that portion of the rental, <laughs> there's still the greater. Which yeah. isn't part of this anymore. We don't have the greater one here at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in a perfect world that you'd be able to say, if you approve this, then we'll be able to reduce the actual operating budget by so much money because of the uncertainties of deliveries, et cetera, et cetera, it can't really work that way. It, it could, it could be six months from now and in the FY24 budget, there'll be that much left over for the rentals, you know, to turn back to free cash mm -hmm. because he has the equipment, but you're right, we don't know when. Right. So Erica, the current boom lift that we're renting is 3,000 a month. It's needed for at least four months out of the year. Okay. <clears throat> Term of life so this figures. should be 10 years, even used. But it'll probably go beyond 10 years. Most boom trucks last a while. I use these at, we use these uh, in my industry all the time. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some out there 20 years. Um, all right, well, I, I move in favor of, um, my, my articles are listed, they're numbered differently because I don't think I have the most recent warrant. Um, in favor of the boom. So this is 11? 11, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of the boom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll second her. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. I'm persuaded by the word used. <laughs> That's kind of a tough one. Yeah. Um, article 12, 99,000 from the highway maintenance building for a new 18 inch chipper with winch. Yep. And 7,000 for a chipper box. I make a motion in favor. I supported this at our special town meeting when no one else, well, I mean, when, <laughs> when, it, when it suffered a defeat mm -hmm. in December. But um, yeah, I, I continue to support this. I'll second Erica's motion. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm unfortunately a no on this, sorry. I, 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 like, I like our current rental arrangement and I would hold off until that is no longer available. So it's two to one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Here we can just do number 20 if you want to um you guys already did that one didn't you yeah yes. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yeah it's up to you but 20 we didn't do oh select board the finance committee yeah yeah why don't we vote i mean well, we already did not on 20. yeah we did we did. Oh, we did? That was yeah, the first earlier. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 getting old. Doesn't have dollar signs. Doesn't have dollar signs. Yeah, we did. Oh, if I didn't write it down, he's, I would have really old. Yeah, thank you. He's really old. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my god, oh my gosh. I like the sound effects, so thank you. 
Well, I guess okay. he has his opinions about it. Yeah. All right, so Article 13 is 31138 from the Ambulance Receipts Fund for the partial payment of the ambulance operational expenses. Our ambulance is a huge bargain for the town. It's a very valuable service. And the cost to the town of us joining South River EMS for the ambulance service, you don't even want to know. We need to keep our ambulance. I'll make a motion to approve Article 13. I'll second that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I believe the finance committee. Yeah. yeah. We want to make a motion to adjourn. Mo motion to adjourn. And make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Thank, Thank you all you. so <laughs> much. Who baked the cookies? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Thank you for coming. Thank you very well. Thank you. Thank you. Take some with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was yesterday after the meeting. No, I'm all good. <laughs> So Article 14 is 65270 to pay for the paving note for, for the Shelburne Falls Road paving from last year or the year before. I'll make a motion to approve Article 14 to pay a bill we owe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Article 15 is $9,600 to basically get the get the Delabar Avenue repairs that this is this is from 2012 is when this project started this was Hurricane Irene damage 2012 and this the FEMA is so, right yes it, it's yes yes it's and, gone on for and and okay. um, it qualified for FEMA disaster assistance that whatever and from the time it takes the federal government and the federal highway department to actually do what's necessary to do from the engineering and all that other stuff, the amount that was bud that, that they budgeted for this now is no longer adequate. So we have to pony up $9,600 so we can access the hundreds of thousands of dollars in federal assistance that has already been awarded to this project. Um, that's, that's sort of my understanding of what this is all about. It, yes. So this is actually for a bid phase services, construction phase services, grant administrative assistance for the Delaware Avenue pre-hazard mitigation grant project. And right now it's, they call them Jersey barriers. That's what I, they're, they're just concrete. Instead of curbing, and it, it, it keeps the cars from driving off the cliff into the South River Canyon right there. Um, but it, it needs to be properly done and the money is there to do it we just need to unlock it by paying this so that's what this is so real quick how do we know once we pay this it'll actually be unlocked so what this is is actually for the contract with GZA um, the select board already approved the first two phases of this and they had like five steps in there mm -hmm. but we didn't have enough money left over um, Oh, we knew we didn't have enough money before? In, in Delabar. So it's not an increased balance? No, this is, this is a very convoluted thing. What happened is when GZA, the town already was planning to do this. They hired GZA to look into it. GZA actually wrote the grant for FEMA, but because of their procurement laws, they look back and they say, well, you can't use GZA as your grant match because it, and it's just like so convoluted. It's like, well, we didn't know we were going to apply for it. We, you know. Yeah. So long story short, the town can't use what we're paying GZA as match, and we have to fund it ourselves. We can't fund it out of the grant. Okay. So this is the last bit of the money for the twenty thousand. I think it was altogether. Okay. To make sure we can move, and we need to get moving on this All right. pretty quickly. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> Article Fifteen. <laughs> To provide $9,600 to release $100,000. Yeah. Well, all in favor? <laughs> aye. 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 Unanimous. 16 is a very is a, an annual thing too. It's um, approving expenditure limits in our revolving funds, um, which we have to do in town meeting by bylaw. 5,000 for Medicaid, 6,000 for dog licenses, 10,000 for newsletter, 20,000 for youth sports. So I'm going to make a motion to approve that or recommend that. Second. 
Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, yes, um, how, where did you, I didn't even see you there. Where did you come from? <laughs> I walked in. Um, I, when I left this afternoon, I thought everything was in order for the payroll warrant, and I heard Mike might have had some difficulty We did, yeah. Numbers. Yeah, we're going to do it later. It's okay. Oh, okay. So I just brought the numbers to confirm, but you don't want to. We don't have anything to sign or anything. Oh, you didn't provide No, no, no. Okay. So we said okay. we'd do it next week. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> well, actually, there's some signatures going on tomorrow. So if you if the paperwork's in there, we can sign it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They can do that I'll tomorrow. make sure we get it ready. Yeah. Thank okay. you, though. Sorry, guys. I didn't even hear you. I'm in front of you. He's absorbed in the world. The art of pickleball. The art of pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> All right, Article 7 is um, creating a new special purpose stabilization fund, the Opioid Settlement Stabilization Fund, so that we can receive, and uh, yeah, it's the proper, appropriate legal place to receive our opiate settlement stabilization monies, which are coming. We have some already, and we need yeah. a place to put it, yeah. especially so we can track it for the next 30 years. So. These are good problems to have. Yes. We want these problems. So I'm going to make a motion to approve Article 17, the creation of the Opioid Settlement Stabilization Fund. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Article 18, um, 20,000 from free cash for OPEB. You can reduce it if you want. <laughs> But so it was already voted by finance, so I guess yeah, that would be tricky, wouldn't it? Um, I move that we support Article 18. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Article 19, vote to transfer 12811 from free cash to the general fund to pay a bill that we owe. <laughs> Um, on the highway garage facility. <laughs> Make a motion to approve Article 19. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 20, another housekeeping thing to authorize the treasurer and tax collector to uh, use banking services. Um, <laughs> I'm in favor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're getting rid of yeah. So that was so that's Erica's motion. I'll second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Um, Article twenty one, ten thousand dollars to cover compensated absences. Um, you can't call them compensated absences unless you provide money to compensate them. Vacation payouts. Oh, God. Yeah. Does, that's sick time, too, or just vacation payouts? Um, oh, you know, it's funny because Jam was just here, and I can't remember we how much. I don't, I don't think you don't do pay. sick time. I, don't, I think it's only the vacation. Yeah, the sick pay buyback is yeah. a whole separate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not the PTO. We'll get me started on that. No. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the... Um, so I'm gonna make a motion to make a motion to recommend Article 21, 10,000 to cover compensated absences. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Article 22 is twenty-four thousand dollars for conversion therapy for the board of assessors. A conversion expenses. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, conversion, a lot of news. Uh, conversion expenses. So I should let you know that the la this week the Board of Assessors voted to release 25000 from the overlay account surplus, which would be used um, to pay for this. Although Lee expects that number to come down um, and be amended on the town meeting floor. So we, uh, we don't need this article? No, we do. No, we do. It's well, just they the, do. They the do. amount will be changed. But okay. my, my thing on this is not the payment, it's not the financing, it's the timing. And whether this, whether the board this year, as currently constituted, is has enough on their plate 
that they don't need to be, you know, rolling up their sleeves and tackling this incredibly labor-intensive process, and that maybe uh, they'd be better off waiting a year. Does it come out of free cash? No, it, no. Would, it would come out of their own account, their own overlay account. Um, the the problem is that um, the software, the Tyler software that they have, as Lee was explaining, they can't, if somebody comes in and says, how did you arrive at that number? She can't go into the software and actually explain it to somebody. It does the calculations behind the scenes and she can't even access that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I, I don't know if delaying will We'll make that any better because a lot of the a lot of the towns are already leaving Tyler and switching to Patriot. So, in other words, it's going to. I think it's going to have to happen anyway at some point. But I agree that when I, I understood all that, um, I just um, am concerned with the just challenges in providing you know sort of the, the essential services to residents as is. But the, this, the conversion is a massive undertaking, and um, you know, have massive respect for everybody involved in the board in, in assessing and the board of assessors. But there have been challenges this year, and you know, and a lot of I say a lot, but um, you know, mul multiple residents uh, with issues getting access to services. So with, with all that said, uh, there, there's no point you can just, just vote, I don't know, um, make a motion to, make a motion on Article 22, 24,000 from the, oh, it's, it says from available funds, the motion is almost certainly going to say from the, from the assessor's overlay. Um, and remember what the art, what this warrant says isn't legally binding, it's what the motion says. And we haven't drafted the motions yet. Um, Um, so that's that's what that's what this is. Twenty four thousand conversion expenses. Board of assessors. Did you make a motion, Phil? Yeah, I did. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, yeah, I each. Say yes as well. All right, let's just go with the flow here. Uh, so that's unanimous. Article 23, 5,000 for future revaluation work. Um, this seems like an annual expenditure. There's always future review. I don't know. But it costs 15 grand every three years, so we just suck away five grand a year. That's, okay. that's kind of why it feels that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the warrant last year. So, um, pretty straightforward. This is this is what they do. And they need to revaluate so they can charge people more in taxes. Otherwise, they can't do that. So, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve Article Twenty Three. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two Aye. Um, Twenty-four is five thousand dollars to the to replenish the grant match and administration account. Submitted by the town administrator. So this is just for if a grant opportunity comes up in a time frame where you can't go to town meeting or some other source, it's just nice to have something on hand so we can immediately pay it out. There's not a huge amount of money, mm -hmm. um, but if opportunities arise, at least it's there to use. Well, you know how I feel about grants. So I'll make a motion to approve Article 24. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 25 is the annual contribution to the field library. It's $2,845. All our neighbors are paying in the neighborhood of 100000 or more. I'm going to feel even more right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
this is a huge <coughs> bargain. The um, the trade off is Marshall Field has passed away 120 years ago, and he still exercises considerable authority over the library and its set up and its, as an institution from beyond the grave. But um, thank you, Marshall Field. So I'm going to make a motion to to recommend the 2,845 hours to the Field Library. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 26, a victory. We're motioned to rescind Article 3 at the town meeting, which was to pay for the cost of the bridge repair for North Poland Road, which was deemed um, hazardous and shut down by the state before we could fix it. Um, which had the happy side effect of the state paying for its emergency repair. We now have a temporary bridge. So we get to revoke um, the passage of the article from before in which we were agreeing to borrow to fix it. It's good. Good thing. So I'm going to make a motion to recommend Article 26. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Um, Article 27, I think this is also new. Um, allow the select board to apply for, accept, expend state, federal, and other grants which do not require town appropriation or town meeting approval. I make a motion to approve that. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I heard that from the distorted Canadian hotel. <laughs> um, so that you know. Article 28, the third year in a row <laughs> that part of this is in here. We're three times, th you know, thrice is the charm, right? So let's, let's, let's hope that this is, is going to work out this time. So this is um, acquiring for $4,700 the um, acquiring in fee by eminent domain for the flood control for the, the half interest in the property along the river of Mary Bow Bay, hey. Bay and the half interest in the property owned by the Salvation Army. There's been so much to all this, but this is, uh, yeah, uh, this is, it's really the same part of the story except the, the update is that this is how the Salvation Army and the Estate of Mary Bay want us to proceed. So, um, and it is easiest for all concerned to do it this way. And the town gets what it wants and everybody else gets what it wants. So it is an eminent domain, but it's, which normally has a connotation of some sort of adversarial process or involuntariness to it, but that is not the case with this. Um, Assuming it's okay to say that, I'm not even sure. But, Absolutely, okay. it's written right yes. in there. That uh, both parties have stated in <laughs> writing that this is their preferred method for transferring this property. Yes, yes. okay. Yes, because I want Reading to make sure everybody sentence. knew no. that. Um, because just the cost to each of the different parties, just to get an appraisal and yeah. have the lawyer fee would, would cost Evil. more than the amount they're going to get for the property. So they both gave um, written statements that they would prefer the town to take it by eminent domain. And just give them the so, fee. So I'm going to make a motion that we do that. Forty-seven hundred dollars. The uh, eminent domain, estate of Mary Bay and Salvation Army. And by the way, that forty-seven hundred is coming from the previous correct article, which approved the yeah. purchase of the yes. land. So yeah, doesn't cost the town anything. Correct. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Article 29 is the Community Preservation Act, and we don't vote on that. Oh, yes, we do. Do, do you? Yes. I didn't see. Okay, so let me write it in there and select board recommendation. But the finance committee does not? No, that's correct. Because they don't. It's not town money, it's community preservation money. Got it. So the community preservation is 17,000, which is the town share of the um, 
Frontier Tennis Court Pickleball Court project, which we have to pay regardless, so this is a good outcome. Um, $45,000 to, to the, for the match for the 450000 municipal vulnerability grant that we talked about earlier, and then the ability to um, for the commission to, to, to shift money around from account to account within their domain, which is always what we do. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to approve Article 29, the Community Preservation Fund stuff. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Article 30 is the one sentence change to the personnel bylaw. Um, just changing it from you can't be a current employee to you can't be a currently paid employee. Because a current employee is every volunteer that works that, that is in any committee. So we can't. We'd like to actually start that committee up again. It's kind of hard when you rule out half the town's population. So I'm going to make a motion. Uh, make a motion to approve Article Thirty. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, Thirty-one is. A, is um, um, I think that the slide for that or whatever the other work term for is the Mullins um, law or amendment yeah basically saying that you can you can miss a meeting and still be able to vote on it as long as you've reviewed transcripts and watched and listened to recordings and certify that you have actually done so and honestly that's been my understanding of what it what the process has always been so uh, to me this is just voting to what practice um, is or should be already um, I know in committees that I've always been involved in you don't have to be there to vote on minutes you don't have to well you do for the hearings so some yeah, of these public okay. hearings it's a little bit yeah, more stringent that, that makes sense yeah so um, so that's what it is. So you can miss one meeting and still vote on the business before the committee, as long as you read the transcripts. So I think that that makes good common sense, and um, going to make a motion to approve Article Thirty One. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, Article 32 is amending the bylaws for notices and special accounts um, and reporting requirements and consultant services and appeals of choice of consultant. So this is this is a planning board recommend uh, article. Well, actually, no, I put it in there as the select board because it's not really the plan. I mean, they it's it's an amendment to our general bylaws which will allow all boards and committees right. to hire consultants and set fees and um, so it's it's a, another sort of housekeeping thing it just gives any board or committee in the town the authority to enter into that kind of um, uh, arrangement with outside consultants do they need approval to pay those consultants first mm, oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is just a, it's, like I said, sort of a housekeeping thing, just allowing them to do it. Again, another reason why our bylaws get longer. <laughs> yeah, the, the, when I looked at it, the, the one question I had about it was that it doesn't provide for the applicant to pay the consultant fee. And I always thought that that was kind of the direction we wanted to go in. Uh, missing something? It says expenses for advertising, notices, inspections, and professional review will be borne by the applicant. So the professional review includes consultant? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Does it? Are you sure? Yeah, pretty sure. That's what it's, that's the whole purpose of it. And so you take a certain amount of money and on hand, put it in an account, 
And if there's anything left over, it goes back to the applicant. Okay with that? Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Think so. <clears throat> Motion for Article Thirty Two. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. So, at this point, I'd like to hold on. Yeah, ask that we table those two because I still have some questions with the planning board. And I want to be sure you have the absolute correct language. And I believe the very last one, the citizens' petition, you already voted on. Yeah. So. What about the other citizens' petition about? That's about the elections, a ballot question, and that will come up next week for you to decide if you want it on the ballot. Well, I can speak to Article Thirty Four if you'd like, because I had some play in it. Article Thirty Four. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh yeah, Southport sure. Powers, yes. Yeah, sure. so this was brought up because when we were having the meeting with um, the cell power they were trying to, or maybe going forward with on the Ashfield border, I brought up the fact that there are some things in the bylaw that aren't up to date with the technology and what's coming. So um, Beth did a great job on this, but all this is really doing is adding um, some provisions to our bylaws um, that restrict the carriers from adding whatever they want without uh, due process with the select board. So <clears throat> it was kind of open-ended in the current bylaws that we have for other types of cell sites. The majority of the bylaw is based on what's called a macro cell site um, and not for um, what they call small cell sites, which can go on utility poles or buildings. So this bylaw addresses that, as well as some future technology that will be coming out in the next decade. So Great. Yeah. We'll be ahead of the curve. Thank yes. you. <laughs> and then, of course, the, the marijuana one was just dealing with, with the ownership requirements. Um, but we can, we can do that next week, if that's all right. Because then you'll just have two to do. Good. Good. Um, <coughs> all right. Items not anticipated. Sorry, we there is no no more votes on the Sorry. warrant. Okay. No more votes for tonight. Next week, there's a couple. We're gonna we're gonna the the last couple. The planning board asked us to hold off on for a week. No, I asked. Oh, town administrator <laughs> asked, but it was, it was based on uh, just fine tuning it with the yeah. in, in con consultation with the planning board. Uh, so that was good. We made big progress. Absolutely. All right. I, items not anticipated 48 hours. Not any time administrator update. We're looking at it. It's called the warrant. No, no. It's, it's a nice oh, that's long right. one. Uh, <laughs> one. Uh, I'm sorry. But I, I'm happy to just post it online as usual unless you have questions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because this one was two weeks worth. I guess I didn't see the rails last time I went to the transfer station. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's bring up the transfer station. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, when I was there, every people, everybody that pulled in, three cars in a row that I was, that I was there watching, they, they all thought that those rail safety rails that are now at the transfer station hopper mm -hmm. uh, all meant that you could no longer use that. That was they printed yellow, not whatever. It's just just so you can't fall in. But everybody's like, "What what are you closing that for? Where 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 are we supposed to put our trash?" They just so funny. Huh. I didn't even notice it. Yeah. So well, it, it is it is high enough to make it difficult for a number of people to hoist their trash up and over it. So mm -hmm. I'm just putting out there that I think it would be great to try to come up with some kind of lift system. You know, something that's attached to the rail that you can somehow pick up and just dump. Um, I, that's just a first thought of how we could make it easier for people because, you know, I understand it's not, not fun. So any creative minds out there, 
please call me with the solution. <laughs> Next time I go, I'll look at it a little closer. Right. The, 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 the other thing that in, in, her town, in the town administrator update, just so that, you know, we, we, just for, we, we, do, we will need a special town meeting in December again. If, you know, the whole uh, permanent replacement bridge on North Poland Road, there's rights of ways issues that we're, we'll, will require a special town meeting. So um, just put that on your calendar. And you know we can we can talk about date or afterwards. That might we might not have to do that on a Saturday. And since there's a citizens ballot initiative, maybe we could try it Monday. Yep. I don't know. We'll but see. Because the by there's no bylaw that controls this best time. Right. I, I should at least point out that in today's paper, um, April 24th, is the first of our tree warden public hearing notices. So the next one will be run on Monday, and then the hearing is on the 8th um, at 5.30, just before the select board meeting. And, yeah. Yes, wonderful. Um, and we, so the, 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 um, the sale of zero off Ashfield Road, ready for the board to proceed with the sale? Yes, next so Monday. we're gonna be following chapter 30B Section 16 and the disposal of the property, and I'll work on that this week. Next Monday. Mm -hmm. Next Monday, we'll be doing that, or uh, I don't know. know. <laughs> right. That's that's the aspirational goal. I don't. It, well, I don't know. Because, yeah, the okay. grants due on the fourth. So. All right. Uh, next meeting is the first of May, which is also the day that everybody's taxed. Bill is the town. That's true. So, oh, oh, happy confluence of events. And will be the signing of the warrant. And the signing of the warrant. <laughs> um, Reading the book is hard. That was weird. You there, Erica? That had a vaguely Canadian accent, though. <laughs> anyway. Oh, okay. Um, so with that, a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Conway's syrup is better. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>